Happy Tesla Earnings Day. Tesla's numbers are hot off the press. We're going to dive into everything, all their financials and updates. Here is the Q4 shareholder letter that was just put on their website. I'll link to this below if you want to follow along. Uh, but Tesla put out a record quarter for both vehicle deliveries and storage deployments. Now, before we dive into this letter, though, I want to jump right into these financials. We got them visualized here on Main Street Data. Uh, these numbers just were released minutes ago. So $25.7 billion in revenue uh, for Tesla for the quarter. So this was just above a record high, but you can see momentum on that top line is stalling a bit. If we zoom in to year over year growth on the top line, uh, that was just 2% revenue growth. And you can definitely see that momentum is slowing a bit. Um, in terms of gross profit, we had 4.18 billion of gross profit for Tesla in the quarter. That was down 6% year over year. And we were increasing at 20% year over year. So a little bit weaker gross profit number which contributed to the weaker than expected operating income number of 1.6 billion, um, which was down 23% year over year. So here are the earnings numbers that we're looking for. And overall, a very strong number if we take a zoom out on Tesla's earnings from the past 10 years, 1.6 billion, um, making a ton of money, very profitable. But as you can see, down from this peak and still not exhibiting the massive growth that we would like to see um, to justify the higher share price. So all in all, I think we're at this very fascinating moment with Tesla where the core business right now goes through these growth cycle waves. And you can see we're kind of topping out in this wave of growth in earnings and profits and revenue as the three and Y are delivered as the best selling cars in the world. There's not much growth left. So now it's all about that story of the transition to autonomy and to cyber cab for the next avenues of growth of Tesla. And that's what investors are curious about. So if we dive into this report here, before I'm going to go into all the numbers and nerd out, I do think it's important to give you the most important news. From this whole letter which is about CyberCab, because um, like i said so much of tesla's valuation is comes down to the CyberCab product when will it come out will they be able to launch out a robo taxi service because that's going to drive the earnings growth that wall street is arguably already pricing in at the stock so here we can see in their guidance section this is the best part of the shareholder letter i think CyberCab will continue to pursue a revolutionary unbox manufacturing strategy and is scheduled for volume production starting in 2026 so i think this is the biggest news from the shareholder letter is CyberCab's not just coming out in 2026 but in a big way so i think that is sort of the goal that tesla wants investors to keep their eyes on um, and that is the big needle mover for the company. So that is super duper exciting. Um, there was tons of other good news um, in this shareholder letter. Let's start at the top and rip through. But CyberCab coming in a year has got to be the most important one. Um, earnings strong, $1.6 billion. Um, I thought it was also important to keep in context how profitable Tesla has become as a company. Um, their cash increased about $8 billion this year to $36.6 billion. So with almost $40 billion in cash, Tesla, zero risk of going bankrupt or anything like that in a very strong, rock-solid financial position. Love that. Um, Model Y, best-selling car in the world of any kind. Um, now they've just refreshed it. That's going to get delivered in March. So they expect that to continue to be the world's best-selling car. So awesome to see that refresh. Ton of momentum um, there. I thought this was an interesting tidbit. Um, they're also working to launch FSD supervised in Europe and China this year. So that's very exciting news. Um, if we go to the financials here, dive in get a little bit nerdy uh, we can see that automotive business was really the weak spot uh, with negative eight percent year-over-year revenue growth energy revenue up 113 percent year-over-year in q4 to three billion dollars services and other revenue up 31 percent. that's going to grow as the fleet grows supercharging service um, warranty sales all that kind of stuff so that led to total revenue of 25.7 billion uh, gr gross margins did get hit and that's because I don't know, maybe energy had worse gross margins than expected and service did. But either way, we're looking at gap gross margins of 16.3%. That's the lowest um, in the past five quarters. And so that is what hurt the earnings number. On addition to higher uh, or to lower gross margins, we've also had higher expenses. Uh, Tesla expenses bumped up, growing about 9% um, year over year in Q4, which doesn't seem like much. But when revenue is only growing 2%, that 9% expense growth eats away. And a lot of that's due to AI and the new investments that Tesla is making there. Um, and if we go to operating margin, 6.2%, still amazing for an auto company, but as you can see, down from that 10% last quarter and the 15% that we've seen from Tesla. So Tesla definitely a little bit weaker there in the operating margin uh, perspective, and that led to income of operations, which is, this is the most important number that I always look at, the core earnings of the business, 1.6 billion in the quarter. So on an annual run rate, that's about six or 7 billion of earnings. That's not gonna justify you know, this $1.4 trillion valuation, basically trading at a 200 times uh, 2024 earnings right now. So 
I think that's important to keep in context. Now, if we scroll through here, uh, we can get a little bit more clarity. This is just by annual numbers to see the kind of growth of everything. Automotive business used to be the powerhouse, now slowing down, but still so much bigger than it was uh, just a couple years ago. And then we look at energy revenue and services revenue, which have boomed to now become about, you know, 10 or 15% of Tesla's overall revenue. And actually over 20%, if you combine them, of Tesla's sales are now from this services and other and energy and storage component. Um here they give us a little more clarity on what happened in terms of the financials. Obviously, basically energy and services driving growth. Vehicle business had a little bit uh, tougher year than expected. Cash flow still very strong. I thought this was interesting to see that production of 460,000 units in Q4 was down from 495,000 units in Q4 uh, 2023. So this really shows you that sort of maturation and top out of Tesla's sales um, with their current vehicle lineup. Now, um, also as well as high interest rates have been impacting this vehicle deliveries number. And so with much lower interest rates and Tesla expanding their vehicle lineup, that's why we saw growth from half a million units a year to almost, you know, 1.8 million. And now it's steadying at 1.8 million. But Elon Musk and Tesla are saying this number, which was down 4% total production um, in 2024, is slated to grow again next year. So everybody's looking at what that growth rate um, will be. Also, there's always been lots of talk about them decreasing the supercharger network. So I thought it was interesting that they continued to expand that about 19% growth in superchargers this year. Um, then in terms of vehicle capacity, lots of interesting tidbits on this uh, uh, slide here. They also re-mentioned the cyber cab uh, is going to be in volume production 2026. Um, the semi truck is being built uh, or the factory is starting to the factory will be complete by the end of 2025 with a ramp up in 2026. So the semi still going slow like a turtle, but it is coming, I promise. It's just so much harder to launch in that entirely new customer segment, um, but that still continues to make great progress. Uh, refresh Model Y, uh, continuing to do great after the Model Y's big success last year. But And this is also another interesting one, market share of Tesla vehicles by region. You can see this was just going all up, up, up. Now is a little bit flatline and decreased due to competition, due to interest rates, um, and due to lack of new vehicles. Then we'll get to the exciting part. Tesla's AI division here. So V13, this is what they're very excited about, the new version of self-driving software. Um, they're coming out with better and better safety data. Tesla's using autopilot, drove 5.94 million miles between accidents. The average US driver is 0.7 million miles. That's like eight times less likely to get in an accident. So that's amazing. Um, and billions and billions, I think we're up to like 6 billion uh, of miles. Um, or with, uh, no, no, how many miles is that? 3 billion miles driven on Tesla's full self-driving software and adding a few billion a quarter at this rate. So Tesla continues to stack up bill literally billions and billions, soon to be tens of billions of real world driving data um, to train its software and very excited about, I mean, I've been using my full self-driving software all around Seattle. I got to say it's getting, it's getting really good. Energy and storage, so much to be excited about here. I think the most exciting highlight is uh, the, right, this little tidbit here, the Shanghai Mega Factory will begin ramping up in Q1. They've been experiencing a boom. Uh, oh, and if you look at the gross profit for energy and services, even though their revenue was up, was down. So I think that's why earnings were a little bit bad this quarter. You can see that little downtick, even though it was up in terms of uh, revenue. Um, and here's deployments, and you can see these absolutely booming Tesla's battery deployments, and this is before Shanghai is kicked in. So now that Shanghai kicks in, this is going to continue to grow uh, in a big way. They actually guide here um, for 50% growth at least in the energy business, so that's exciting, but I think they can do a lot better than that. Also, they reiterate, Elon Musk in the last, last conference call said they could grow about 20 to 30% uh, in terms of vehicle deliveries last year, or 2025 versus 2024, they're going to grow about 20 to 30 percent this year after shrinking a couple percent last year. So everyone was super excited about that. Now I don't want to say they're walking that back, but they're basically saying uh, we expect the vehicle business to return to growth in 2025. The rate of growth will depend on a variety of factors, including the acceleration of our autonomy efforts, production ramp at our factories, and broader macro. So they're basically saying we still expect to grow deliveries from about 1.8 million this year, but 20 to 30 percent. We'll see if they can hit that. Um, I think that's going to be super important clarity on the conference call. Now. We expect energy deploy storage deployments to grow at least 50% year over year in 2025. I think they can crush that, um, and that's going to be an exciting spot. Hopefully, the uh, margins on those are strong so it can actually help earnings because it didn't look like um, it was there. Uh, then, um, this is an interesting tidbit they keep talking about. 
is, uh, well, first of all, their cheaper, more affordable model remains on track for the start of production in the first half of 2025. That's very, very exciting. Uh, these vehicles will utilize aspects of next generation platform as well as aspects of our current platforms and will be produced on the same manufacturing lines as our current vehicle lineup. So that, that was super interesting because they're basically saying we don't need to adjust our manufacturing to start building these new cheaper cars, which we're still very curious and apparently isn't the new Model Y. Maybe it's the Model Q. Um, but And they're basically saying they have up to 3 million of capacity um, on these production lines. They could grow 3 million vehicles, enabling 60% growth from 2024 before investing in new production lines. So right now Tesla's saying, okay, we built up, we only built 1.8 million cars, but we've got production lines for 3 million. We can use those same production lines to build these new cheaper cars that are coming out. That's going to drive growth. Then you got CyberCab coming here. Now let's go to the pictures. It's my favorite part. Cost per vehicle. Now at the at the very high level, Tesla's core competency is manufacturing electric vehicles that are super efficient at a very good price. This is what they continue to excel at here. This is their North Star, and I love it. Um, and here they hit a new all-time record going under $35,000 per car produced. So that cost will continue to come down. This is a cool uh, chart showing all of the technology that was developed for CyberCab or Cybertruck that's going to get used in future vehicles. So a ton to nerd out on here uh, if you want to dive into it. But basically, the Cybertruck is so much more than just a funky looking truck. It's a massive innovation in the way cars are built, the technology that goes underneath them. And those innovations Tesla plans to roll out to many more vehicles. And this is kind of a symbol of how Tesla innovates. They put something into an expensive product, test it out, learn about it, and then uh, ramp up the supply chain and manufacturing for it once it gets ready for scale. And then use it for a cheaper product. So here's the brand new Model Y. Um, very stoked. I haven't checked it out in person, but uh, I love the Model 3 refresh. And so I think this is going to do an awesome job driving sales. Uh, people are already loving it. My homie Jay Filch, who has a Model Y, is already FOMOing into getting the new one after seeing it at the mall. So that's a good sign. Um, new interior. This reminds me of the new Model 3. Um, also the back screen, a little bit bigger touch screen. Here's the specs they detail out. Um, here's that semi-factory, um, which is on track to build trucks later this year, which I think is super duper exciting. Um, and so it's been a long time in the making, but nice. They keep putting that in the shareholder letter. So it is coming. It just takes a while. Mega uh, factory in Shanghai. This is what I keep mentioning about those massive batteries. Now that this is complete, um, a lot of growth and earnings in 2025 coming out of this building from Tesla. Um, here's the GA line. Pretty cool to see. Not really moving the needle in terms of uh, investment, but I do, well, kind of, because it is important that Tesla fortifies its supply chain and vertically integrates for cost and for reliability. And their own lithium refinery has been this super in innovative project to basically go down and get their own raw materials. Um, they've actually made a ton of headway on that. So I thought that was a super cool little update uh, to throw in and just shows how Tesla kind of continues to do the right thing um, and is really trying to not just build a, like a snazzy electric car, but a truly new sustainable transportation ecosystem. Um, here's their massive training center. The brain, I guess, are part of the brain for our self-driving cars. So pretty cool to see all that. Um, a little more of this here. And here are some more of the metrics that Tesla puts out. Tesla puts out Tesla, a good way to visualize the growth of the business. I mean, look, I'm a huge Tesla bull. I'm obviously holding on to all my Tesla stock, but I do think the valuation is rich given the, the momentum in the core business here is stalling. If you look at the trailing 12 months uh, deliveries, they've been stalling. If you look at the cash flow, it's been stalling. If you look at the income, it's, it hasn't been growing. So for Tesla to maintain this massive valuation, um, I think they're going to need to uh, invest in you know, they're going to need to be growing uh, a, a little bit quicker, put up those growth numbers, because I keep reiterating how fascinating it is that, that Tesla stock is now worth 1.3, you know, $1.2 trillion, but they are trading an evaluation that's like 200 times earnings. So these are the slides um, for the full year financials, just to give you a true like context and really zoom out. Um, now that we have the, the final numbers, 98 billion in revenue, basically flat from last year, but way up from where Tesla has been. So 98 billion in revenue, you're, buy you're buying that business for 1.2 trillion today, about 12, 13 times sales for minimal growth. We need to see growth to justify that. Gross profit down as margins have gotten hit to about 17.5, 18 billion in 2024, um, not as high as 2022, but you can see that momentum of the numbers is strong. And that's the, the point I want to drive home here is that momentum that long-term earnings uh, momentum. Seven billion for operating income. This is a little bit lower than I was expecting for the full year, um, down from the previous two years. So this is the number to watch, I think. And with higher interest rates and Tesla decreasing prices, 
um, there's been a lot of pressure on the automotive business. And this is why Elon says that the automotive business is so difficult because it's really hard to make a, a strong, consistent profit margin every year. And we're seeing that with Tesla as higher interest rates come out, as consumer demand for EV fades just a teeny little bit and competition heats up, that already has big impacts on the margin. So I think this is, uh, we're getting soon to that rubber meets the road moment of Tesla where so much of that valuation, you know, one point two three four trillion dollars for seven billion in earnings you're paying 200 times earnings are earnings going to instantly double to 14 billion actually they could pretty easily even to 20 billion even to 25 billion but that's still not really enough to justify this one to two trillion dollar valuation i think tesla needs to hit 50 40 50 billion in earnings to justify upside from here at least if you're going on the financials so i think we're at such a fascinating time elon musk has said robo taxis are launching in california and austin this year that is what I'm waiting for to get clarity on the conference call. This is such a fascinating time. These financials we already kind of knew because of the delivery numbers, but Elon is very involved in the Trump administration. What does that mean for Tesla? Where is his focus with Tesla? What's his tone? What's the tone of Tesla? Is this going to be a rough two years as they cut a bunch of government spending and the EV incentive packages? Is this going to be, you know, we're all going to like sort of a winter where we have to hunker down and the industry gets tough and earnings are tough and that's sort of a sobering moment for markets? Or is this just all euphoria now that Trump's in office and Elon's working with him? I personally think it's going to be a little in between. There's going to be a lot of hiccups. Us going from $7 billion in earnings to $70 billion in earnings to justify this valuation is going to be a very long road. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of expenses and headaches and slow things to roll out the robo-taxi. There's a reason why it's taken way most so long. It's not going to be overnight make billions. And so I am just fascinated by this this going through this, cause, this chasm of Tesla being valued as a car company to this robo-taxi company and then a robotics company. And sort of maintaining this high valuations, waiting for the earnings to fill in, how patient does Wall Street get? And so um, I think it's going to be very interesting. I think these numbers were a little bit weaker than I expected, but nobody's holding Tesla stock for the numbers. Everyone's holding it for the news. And what's interesting is the stock was getting hammered as I started making this video. And now that I'm recording, it's up, probably because the numbers suck. But then everyone realized CyberCab is still on track for volume production next year. And that's all that matters. So I think when I think what's ahead for Tesla, I think you're going to see it. And you got to remember, the stock is is crushed it. In the past six months, it's up 70%. So, of course, it might have a little pullback. So, I think Tesla right now is going to be very volatile um, as the path and launch to robo-taxis happens because you have such a high earnings multiple. Elon Musk is in the news with Trump. That is changing every day, that insanely fluid situation. I mean, my high-level take on that is... Very weird time to be a Tesla investor. Any headline with Elon Musk gets 100 more clicks than any other article. Any negative headline about Elon Musk gets 100 more, 100x more, more clicks. And that's why that's what's moving on the internet right now. And I think that is so far not impacted Tesla's share price, but has impacted Tesla's brand sentiment. And I think, which is kind of bullshit, frankly, because I just think the me the legacy media is having a field day making fun of Elon Musk. And it's kind of annoying. And I don't think it's justified at all. But that is what it is. We're in controversial, crazy, uncharted territory with Elon being in with the government. So that is why I'm so curious about this conference call. What is the tone? This is the first time we've heard from Elon and the team, uh, you know, with the Trump presidency. So it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, and then with that question of RoboTaxi just hanging over everyone's head. So let me know what you think in the comments below. What did you think of Tesla's Q4 earnings? I'm going to listen to the conference call and make another video. So see y'all next time. Peace.